You got three types of people in the world. You got cutters, you got burners, you got pickers. I'm a cutter. I used to cut myself and, you know, it it used, used to make me feel better. And my basement was all white. So when I would cut myself, I would write write the things down in, in my own blood that bothered me. So when you turn the red lights on and, and, and you shut the regular lights off, all that red blood turns black. You know, it didn't matter, like, you know, how you looked or anything, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, whether you wrote a good song or not. What do we sound like? Uh, we sound like Black Sabbath meets, meets the Beatles rehearsing drunk on a haunted factory. The music had substance at that point. You know, I cherry thought. pie? I mean, you know, <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> or, like, Wild Bloody Christmas was being written and uh, exposed Peter to a lot of it. And I think it, it did definitely have a creative impact on, like, songs like Black Number One. Manager was like, Motley Crue asked you to go out. He was like, what are you, crazy? How is this shit gonna work? At us. How the hell is gonna be? No way, no way. He's just, do it, do it, do it, it. It'll be good for you guys. You guys should definitely do it. And, and that's it. Reluctantly, that's we did, and that's, that's what put us on the map. Yeah, we went from selling 50 albums a week to selling 2,000 albums a week, I'm like, in one week. When I had found out that uh, the Bloody Kisses went, went, went gold, I'm like, this is like a nation of deaf people. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't take the band seriously. I mean, we would mock, we would call ourselves assholes before you did, because, but we really meant it. And I would come in and say, just, I can't believe you fucking jerk offs are actually paying to, to, to fucking see this. They were working on the Motley Crue record, yeah. and then like, you know, while they were hanging out, whatever, they were, they had a copy of Bloody Kisses and liked it. Yeah, they liked it. So when the time came for them to go on the road, they were like, we want this band to come out with us. And there was a few shows that I, I called people up on stage and I gave them their money back and I threw them out. I said, you fucking asshole. And I'm calling your mother and I would, I would call their mother up on stage. Do you know who your fucking son is right now? The kids today, I don't know. Well, uh, definition of a sellout is um, compromising values to, to uh, make a profit. I, I can do, do carpentry, you know, welding electrical work and stuff like that so so, so that's my my plan b I, if you don't have a trade um <clears throat> you're gonna be pretty much fucked because you know ban bands don't don't last forever a lot of headlining bands uh force their opening bands to to ma match their their merchandise prices and sometimes shirts and hats used to get lost and there was like negative numbers involved you know when you you lost like for shirts had had bands uh offer to 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 uh pay to play for for typo like well their record company would you know would approach ours and of course our record company because that would go towards recouping the album i wouldn't have it if, if it doesn't upset your parents it's not rock music you know so rock music is all about rebellion when when I was in Carnivore, I, I had intentionally written songs like Jesus Hitler, God is Dead. I mean, I attacked left-wing people, right-wing people. So music for it, for it's for it. Yeah. Have you here or see something that uh, you may not want to look at? That's a good reminder. That's, that's rock. rock. You know, rock, rock, rock is, is, is taking those primal feelings and amplifying them to 150 fucking decibels and saying fuck you to the world one of them is carnivore we had to think of something that a hasn't been done before re reflects the band's image is cost effective transportable and non-flammable we used to throw meat out on stage that you know that was our big thing what became harder was to the pressure to perform like this is not like you know back in the 60s where a band had no stage show i mean now production is like two thirds of the show. I mean, there are two things that people should never look into. And that is what goes into the workings of record companies and what goes into the making of sausages. You don't want to know. Mid-level bands, okay, are having a hard time scrounging out a living. Now, mid-level, I'm talking maybe bands that, that sell, you know, 400, 300,000, 400,000 records, you know. Um, you know, what's going to motivate them to, to take out, oh, there's a new rock band. You know, I like them. Let's just take them out and break them. You know, like that, like Motley Crue did with us. Yeah. I had tried numerous times to uh, try to get Empire Hideous on tour. He wanted me to showcase an event. I was trying to help him on a, on a 
ground level by, you know, trying to book shows with, with him and stuff. He would bring, you know, a representative from the label to see the band, get signed, go on tour. It is stated in record company contracts that fulfilling the contract um, meant that the band had to tour, but the record company also had say in the opening bands. We needed to get on a label in order to do a tour with a major band like Typo, and we had no label. I wanted to have Mike's band be given an opportunity to be signed. I, I do recall seeing Empire Hideous, and I'm pretty sure I, I did bring bring Monte Cana down. Like tending to my wounds, and Peter's apologizing to me because the guy who he brought there to sign me so that I could go on tour with him left. Even if we wanted to help him, you know, hey, we can't pay them a lot of money to do it. And now the next thing is, does Empire Hideous have the means to actually travel around the country and be able to afford to do it? Probably not. They wanted to put their, their own bands on there. So now Empire Hideous is out of a record deal. So my hands were tied. Well, in America, the kids do what the advertising and what the record companies, they, they like what they tell them to like, what's popular. Europeans ain't like that. They don't like something, they don't like fuck you. Hey, you, you, yeah, you, with the fucking middle finger up. Hey, you. Jerk off, turn the fucking lights on so, so everybody can see this guy. Your middle finger is the exact same length as your mother's uterus. Hi, mom. You know, I remember, you know, when I finished high school and it was like, you know, all right, do I go to college? And I was like, no, it would get in the way of rock and roll. If I had one wish, I wish that I had a zipper from my crotch to my neck that I could just zip down and step out of my skin. Everybody always, you know, expects you to be Peter Steele, like all of us here in this room, you know, we all have, you know, 20 different sides, you know, like, like the side that I show on stage is maybe two, two, you know, two or three sides of me. People come crawling out of the woodworks and you told me you didn't fuck her and well, I, I lied. I mean, I, 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 you know, I try, try to explain to, to, to my girlfriend that any creature born with testicles is a born liar. And I have four testicles, but I may be lying. What got easier was uh, finding women, and what got harder was my penis. At first, when when I realized uh, that I was a drug addict, you know, an alcoholic bum, uh, the first thing a person does like that is they automatically grow a thousand p fingers, which, which which point to everyone but 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 themselves. You know, drug use and things like that isn't so frowned upon in this environment as it is, say, you know, working for the city. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're going to lose your job if you fail a piss test playing in a band. As every good addict knows, well, if one glass makes you feel good, two glasses are going to make you feel great. Advans, you know, amoeba pills. You know, it was ridiculous. It was everywhere. I believe that I, I let, let my friends down. Josh, Kenny, and Johnny. I believe that I let the fans down. And thirdly and lastly, I, I let myself down. When you're under the influence of, of uh, drugs and alcohol and you live in a basement apartment where, I mean, I was truly fucking psychotic. I, th I thought there was a black octopus coming out of my, my fucking toilet. And I took a sledgehammer and I smashed that fucking toilet. The amount that I drank on stage was directly proportional to, to the amount of people we, we were playing to. I believe it was in, in Denmark where we played to 130,000 people. And me, I, I had to torture myself more by saying, well, that's 260,000 eyeballs. That, that I, I, I have to amuse like a clown, you know, like what am I here to amuse you, to impress you, you know? I drank 12 bottles of wine. I drank four bottles before, four on stage, and four afterwards. The situation has to, has to be right for, for, for this monster to rear its ugly head. And I just never realized that by quitting uh, work for Parks, it gave this demon 
No, I, I summon this demon up. If, if you finally get to play the garden, you know, what do you do? Oh, I played it once, I'm done. Okay, I did. I fulfilled my duty. No, now you want to play it again and again and again and again. It's an addictive thing. It's, you know, you don't want to, you don't want it to end. You know, I mean, why the hell you think you drink so much on the out there? You know, you drink, you have fun, you have a great show, and then you know, the show brings you up to 10, you're living on 10, and then you get off stage, you want to stay on 10. What, what um, drugs and alcohol really, really took away from me was passion. And since I've been sober now about six months, um, I'm starting to, like, feel things again. Yeah, I mean, not everybody, obviously, creative is, uh, Glenn isn't, Glenn doesn't do anything. He Glenn drinks doesn't. champagne once in a while, you know what I mean? And then this guy's like me and Peter, you know, just went, too far. Uh, I, I developed, uh, heart problems, I developed, um, liver problems, I've, I've never had a stroke, I've never had a heart attack. And, and, and as Mark Twain put it, rumors of my death have been highly exaggerated. I, I, I feel at, at like some point, you know, the, the rock and roll, I should say, you know, maybe I should step down and, and because it's not rebellion anymore. You know, rock and roll is a sonic tantrum. That's, that's you know, but you know, if, if, if you can have like all this like, Greenpeace rock and everything's beautiful and man, yeah, you're in for a fucking wake up call because it, there's an asteroid coming with your fucking name on it. Here it is, you know, 2010. We're still here. And it, it, it doesn't seem like, you know, I don't get the impression that we're a nostalgic act yet. Bef before you get on stage, you think, you know, this really could be the last, be the last one. one. This is it. You know, what, what, what do I do now? The wheels are always falling off the bus, man. Somewhere in this nightmare, there was the American dream that was lived out. Because somebody down here likes me. Remember, the devil takes care of her own. You know, if I, if someone say, would you do it all again, start right from the beginning? Absolutely, I would. Why not? The, uh, I guess my, my all-time favorite ba uh, bassist was, um, He's a butler, and we, we, were, we were fortunate that we were on tour with uh, Black Sabbath. And, and I must say that um, th they were, like, every, every band we've, we've been on, on tour with, uh, uh, Pantera, Queensryche, Motley Crue, uh, um, Danzig, they, they've, they've all been very nice. But Black Sabbath, you know, they, they were very... There is a dapper, you know. They were really cool, and I can't. I, 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 I remember they had catering, and I mean, you all had to take a tray and like you know wait online, and you know for you know for the lunch lady to slop down, you know the mystery meat. <clears throat> and I was on on the food line behind Giza Butler. I'm like, I can't believe, you know, I'm on the food line behind you know Giza Butler, and it was it was it was really weird, and uh. I met John and 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 Russell, and he and he uh, he he was very nice. I met Gene Simmons; he was nice. Uh, we were supposed to do a tour with Deep Purple, and I don't know something happened. We 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 got we got an offer that was like better for the band at the time, and I had met Roger Glover backstage, and um, and he goes, "I know you. You you're that guy from." A typo negative you 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 canceled the tour on us why, why did you cancel the tour i said well i was afraid that that you found you would find out that i had stolen all of your bass lines <laughs> <laughs> so the um the only other bass players that i I'd, I'd really like like to meet i believe would be uh john paul jones and uh paul mccartney i mean there 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 are are others uh, but i'd be satisfied with uh you know, meet, meeting the big five, you know. A lot of songs have to do with sexuality and, and there's, there was always a, a huge female population. And so, uh, the temptation was always there. I've had, you know, death threats and, you know, my response is fine, you know, you, you'll, you'll just save me a bullet. Go ahead, do it, I don't care. 
when when I did that stupid Playgirl thing back in '95, we we we, we you know we had a signing and uh, you know I, I would open it up. Hey, I know that dick, you know. And uh, one time this guy um and and like the band sitting next to me, you know signing typo stuff too. And so the guy hand, hands hand, hands me the Playgirl thing and I, and I tilt it and fucking cum drips out from the fucking middle right run right into my lap. <laughs> and uh, and and the band saw it and they they they, they like just they fell over in their chairs and I said can I can I have a napkin please so you know <laughs> yeah 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 I was I was kind of good good natured about it <laughs> I didn't appreciate it you know 